two coaches are out and UConn is in serious trouble with the NCAA. After a 15-month-long investigation, the NCAA says it believes UConn coaches violated recruiting bylaws by giving tickets and benefits to potential players and calling and texting them when they were not supposed to. Jason Page from ESPN Radio's The Back Page with Jason Page is here, along with Fox 61 Sports Director Rich Capola to break down the allegations. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Um, if you could give your opinions on um, how big of a deal is this. I think it's a huge deal. The, the line I've been using is arrogance to ignorance. Huh. That's, that's the route that UConn basketball and Jim Calhoun have gone on this from, you know, not a dime back, swearing at reporters, blah, 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 on and on. And now it's, I didn't know anything. Pat Sellers, Bo Archibald, they did it all. I didn't know anything. Now all of a sudden, Jim Calhoun doesn't know anything. Mm -hmm. The guy went from all-knowing to knowing nothing pretty fast. Rich? You know, when you look at the two guys, I think one of the things that comes to mind with, with Archibald and, and Patrick Sellers, are they scapegoats yeah. for this? And, and with Patrick, listen, we, if you know the guys, they're good guys and, and all that stuff. When you look at the way the, the team has recruited since Tom Moore left for Quinnipiac, it hasn't been good. And, and you know, that's, a, that's the, the, the truth there. So was this kind of a... You know, a way that how long ago did he go? Tom has been three years in okay. Quinnipiac. You know, was this kind of okay? These things happened, I guess. But was this a way? Look, we, we need to get someone else near to recruit. You know, Patrick can step aside. Now he's sort of killed two birds with with one stone. But I think Jason, you may agree with this. And this doesn't say that for anyone. This gives them an excuse. It's it's not doing that at all. But you have to ask yourself. In this era, this day and age, Division I men's basketball at that level, an elite program, a na you know, national program, can you compete and go 100% no. by the rules? Absolutely I don't know that there's any question that you probably can't. One of the, so one because other people have, you know, and it's not to throw anyone else under a bus, but just because they haven't gotten caught doesn't mean they're not doing something else. One other thing real quick on this. Rod Sellers, part of the UConn family, mm -hmm. come, basically coming out and saying, they threw my brother under the bus. Right. Not very good. Well, maybe that's just familial support now. UConn family's pretty tight. Yeah. It's surprising that he came out and actually said that. All right, okay. Let's move on to happier subjects. Um, the big news this week, obviously, is that Howard Baldwin is uh, putting on a Whalers Hockey Fest for hockey lovers. That's big news. There's going to be how many games? Ten games? Is it ten games? Upwards to 20 games. Oh, really? Yeah. And it's going to be outdoors at uh, Rinchler Field, which is big news. I, Rich, Rich is going to be at every one I of know. them, too, by Rich, the way. Um, <laughs> In the penalty box. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're a big hockey fan. Tell me um, how big of a deal you think this is for Hartford. And, I, I mean, and is it really as part of a quest to get the Whalers back? Oh, there's no question, Laura, that, that it's part of a, of a quest. Now, the one thing, and, and, and Jason's very cynical, the one thing that, that Howard has said right off the bat is this doesn't guarantee a darn thing. Um, but, you know, in the press conference on, on Wednesday, you know, Pat Sheehan, who had seen it, came out and said, you know what, he doesn't mean anything's definite. But you know what? If you sit by and do nothing, yeah. then you have no chance. And this is the thing. Look, at the very least, if this lets Whalers fans celebrate the past, and, and I'm tired of hearing people say, let it go. No, not let it go. This is part of the history of a state that from a professional standpoint, particularly a major league standpoint, doesn't have a lot. We haven't had a lot of major league teams. Mm -hmm. it, it's part of the, of, you know, the, the past. Yeah. So why should you let it go? I don't, I don't, I don't go to uh, see the opera. I don't like it at all. I'm not going to knock other people because I don't like it. Yeah. If that's their thing, go ahead and enjoy it. But this is, try, is a step to try to make hockey bigger, uh, make the Whaler name again very, very big in the state, and try to show the NHL that, you know what, we're a viable hockey market. It may not last. It may just make the AHL team stronger. And if it does that, terrific. Right. Let's not delude ourselves, though. There's no arena. There's no owner. And where are you going to put the team, even if you bring them here to play at the XL, are you going to play at the XL Center? There's a lot of questions that have to be answered. Sure, there's a lot of questions. But um, what is it that the NHL, does the NHL not like Hartford, or what is it? I don't think it's a matter of, uh, it's a matter of that. As Jason said, and, and, and Jeff Jacobs wrote, wrote a column earlier in the week, I mean, they still say that the, what they perceive as the problems in the past mm -hmm. are still there. Certainly a building is one of them. Okay. But what, can be is... done with, what can be done with a building? Now, see, again, this is where I think Howard and the NHL differs. Howard, his opinion is, you know, they built these 20,000-seat arenas. How many teams draw 20,000? Yeah. They're, they're too big. You don't need that. 
A few years ago, he told me, out of his own pocket, he had engineers go into the Civic Center and do a study. Can you put lower-level skyboxes? The area was yes. Can you expand the, uh, the corridors? The answer was, was yes. Can they make it into a building that's NHL-approved now? I don't know. Huh. Are the 20,000-seat buildings too big? Probably. Um, you know, again, there's a lot of stuff, and I don't think anyone is, is saying this definitely means it's going to happen because it isn't the case. It's one step to what he wants to do. And you know, there's so many naysayers in this state and so many people that don't believe in us. Mm -hmm. Here's a guy who does believe. Why do we look badly on that? Mm -hmm. Big East, men's basketball, oh, that can't happen. We'll never be anything. How'd that turn out? Division you know, 1A, college football, new stadium, how'd that turn out? Mm -hmm. How'd the Patriots turn out? Yeah, they didn't come. <laughs> Sometimes it's going to work. Sometimes it's not going to work. But let's at least try and not just say we're a coffee stop between Hartford and, and uh, between Boston and New York. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of that thinking. Think big. Why not? Right. I'm a realist. Relocation may pass us by by the time there is an opportunity, uh, an arena, an owner to get an NHL team in here. If this process had started five years ago, right now you'd be in a position where you had an arena, all these teams looking to re relocate, and you can get a team in here. By the time we're ready for one, the time may be gone. What's the um, temperature of your, your listeners? What are they saying about it? There's the, hard, there's the hardcore loyal Whaler fan who's going to call up and say, it'd be great, we'd love to see it. You know, but, it but that same person at the same time will say, but I'm not going to support the Wolfpack. Well, if you're not going to support the Wolfpack, the NHL is going to look over here and say, well, why do we want to put an well, NHL people team here? Could say, I mean, I'm kind of in a hockey crowd, but people could say the level of play is going to be different in an NHL. Team. Not acceptable to the NHL. Though. But here's, here's the thing, though. This is what Howard is trying to tell people. Don't cut off your nose to spite your face. I know those right, Whalers right. fans that say, I, you know, whether it's I can't go to the AHL or I can't support the New York Rangers. Why cut off your nose to spite your face if you think that there's a chance? If What if 10,000 people showed up on the average and 8,000 of them eh, couldn't really care too much about the AHL products but thought this is a way to get the NHL back? Well, if the NHL sees 10,000 people here, they're going to stop and at least consider and say, hey, you know, maybe we were, maybe we were wrong. Atlanta got a team back, didn't they? I mean, it's happened before. Uh, team, you know, other areas of the country didn't have to go through some of the stuff that seemingly Hartford would have to go through to, to get a team in Columbus. You know, that's a big market. What did they do before, before they got a team? So, AHL, the bottom line is, though, you need to have, make it a spectacle. Sports fans today, general sports fans, need something more than the action on the ice, on the court, on the field to draw them in. How are you going to make a spectacle out of a game at the XL Center? It's hard to do, Rich. Oh, it's hard to, and especially, look, the, the, the building is really too big for the AHL and too small, at least in the NHL's minds, for the NHL. So, you know, you're putting curtains up and stuff. Listen, you, can, you, you do need, how do you make it into a, an event? You have to put people in the seats. So if people want an NHL back, they have to understand, don't cut off your nose to spite your face, come out and support them. Otherwise, this, you'll have no shot. This particular event, we only have about 20 seconds, this particular event, I think it's going to be, I was getting texts immediately. I think it'll be a very successful event. Oh, for the Dyer Whalers fans, it's going to be a lot of fun. And the, the outdoor games are going to be great for you know, UConn, the colleges, the high school kids and all that. There's, it's a win-win. Right. Excellent. All right. Well, good discussion. I appreciate you both being here. Thanks You're so much. Welcome. Don't forget, if you missed something here on The Real Story, you can now watch it online by going to fox61.com. You can also catch us on YouTube. And please remember to Facebook friend me. That's Lori Perez on Facebook. Thanks for watching this week's edition of The Real Story. I'm Lori Perez. We'll see you here again next week.